What certifications will you recommend for GRC? Also, do you plan to release a course on Udemy for GRC and its career path? Yeah, yeah great, great question. question. Awesome. So GRC, I'm going to define that first and then we'll talk about it. So GRC is governance, risk, and compliance. And GRC is big business. It is awesome. So if you're not familiar with what those terms mean, when we talk about GRC, we're talking about policy and procedure. So Mario said earlier on, yep. that's the last thing he was working on was policies and procedures, right? That's yep. GRC. It's where you're running the scans of the network and then finding out, okay, based on these scans, here's the vulnerabilities we have, and here's how we're going to patch them and mitigate that risk. And so governance risk and then compliance is verifying you are compliant with the requirements you have. For example, we are a company that accepts credit cards. When you pay for your stuff, you use credit cards. Well, we have to follow the compliance requirements with PCI DSS, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards, to be able to accept those credit cards and do it in a safe and secure manner. If we don't, we lose the ability to do those credit cards. So part of what we do is scans of our codes, scans of our websites, scans of our systems to ensure we're in compliance with the things we need to make sure we are meeting the policies. So that's GRC. To answer your question, yes, we have actually two courses already on GRC that are sitting on Udemy that you can take right now. And uh, both of these courses are ones I did with Kip Boyle, who's my partner from Your CyberPath. And one of them is the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology. The cybersecurity framework is all about GRC and how you do that in a large organization. It is not focused solely on government. It is also used around the world in lots of different places. And the thing I really love about that course is it's a rather short course. It's only about four hours long. But one of the things we do is we're not teaching you theory. We're teaching you how to do it. In fact, as I mentioned, Kip is you know, a former CIO, Chief Information Officer and Chief Information Security Officer. And now he does consulting work. And most of his business is done around the NIST cybersecurity framework and doing this GRC type work. And so as we went through the course, we taught both the theory as well as what does he do on a daily basis in his job. And part of that course in the bonus of it is you can download this Google spreadsheet workbook thing that he created that he actually uses with all his clients that goes through and creates and walks you through the whole process of the seven steps of the NIST cybersecurity framework and how to do it. So if you're interested in GRC, definitely, definitely take that course. The second one we have on Udemy for that is our RMF course, which is the Risk Management Framework course, which is also made by NIST. And the Risk Management Framework is used mostly by the DOD and federal IT systems. NIST cybersecurity framework was made to be for everybody. RMF was really designed for the government to use internally. So if you're working as a government contractor, government civilian, with the military, with the Treasury, Department of Treasury, with Homeland Security, whatever, they all use RMF. And so that course was done in a very similar way. We go through all the processes, we teach you how to do it, and then we, we give you application of it. So you're actually learning how to do it, not just let's pass a test, because there is no certification for those two. And what hiring managers are seeing is we really would love to have a certification so we can just say, yes, they've got that put them into the yes pile, we'll, we'll interview them instead of having to go through and read through all those resumes. Because again, six to 60 seconds, if there's a certification associated with it, they can quickly match that on the HR filters. The other one that I would recommend you take a look at if you want to learn more about it, even if you're not going to do the certification, my CAS Plus course, which is on Udemy and LinkedIn, domain, which I remember on version four, it's either domain one or domain four, but either way, that, that domain of that exam is governance, risk, and compliance. It's GRC. And we spend about four to eight four, five, six hours going through all the GRC concepts, including how do you do a risk assessment qualitatively, quantitatively? How do you measure risk? How do you look for vulnerabilities? How do you do assessments? How do you do compliance? What are all the rules and regulations you need to know? All that stuff goes into that GRC. As far as, as GRC, there's not really any certifications that are like, this is a, you know, I'm a GRC certified professional. They don't really have that yet. It's more like there is a PCI DSS one. There is like CISP and, and CISP. CAS. CISA yeah. and, yeah, and all CASP the CISP, are the, all the, yeah. yeah. So if you look at CISSP, CASP Plus, CISA, which is Certified Information Systems Auditor, that's another GRC certification, or CAP, which is a Certified Accreditation Professional, which is another one by IC Squared, who makes CISP. Those are kind of the four big ones for GRC. I would say that most people who are going to work in GRC eventually move into CISSP and they kind of use that as their, yes, I know how to do GRC yeah. because I'm a CISP. That, that's kind of where I see it. I, I know you're a CISP and, and you, one of the eight domains on CISP is GRC. And, and so I know you, you have that background from that as well, right, Jamario? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> at least from a experience standpoint, I know the question was about, I guess, the courses, but 
yeah, a lot of it's just management, honestly. If you like that management type of stuff, that's where you're going to be at. Again, vulnerability assessments going through. My my personal fun part of that was the, I guess, one of the, the NIST controls is kind of RA5, right? Just vulnerability management. More so with static code because I'm a coder, right? So software development, you actually go through and actually review some of the code that's being pushed through the different systems. And even though you can't, because because of the way the the visions are typically set up, you're going through, you're reviewing the code, it's getting it, you're giving the recommendations to the development teams of how to fix the code. You're, you're more of a, a recommended or a person who advise and consult different things. Because you got to think about like developers, a lot of times their primary focus is to get it functioning. And security is typically glass. Even when I write code, I think about security last. I mean, I'm just trying to get the buttons to work. I'm trying to get everything to flow properly or whatnot. And that could be the frustrating standpoint from being in the, the management standpoint. You can't do it. You're doing the recommendations. And even though you know how to do the code, sometimes they don't like yourself on your toes. You can recommend, hey, look, actually, when you do input validation, all you got to do is create this function that removes all the, you know, colon scripts, all this stuff like that. It's right here for you. Like, ah, oh, you know, we're going to go through, we got to go through our dev, sys test, all these different, it, it's slow. So yes. if you want to get in that world, realize that it's going to be a headache. It's going to be very slow. You're going to do a lot of BS answers, what I call it, especially in the government. So yep. that particular one sticks the most to me. I do like the vulnerability management piece as well. And another thing that's very interesting in the vulnerability management piece is you have to really understand those scanners, right? And understand what they're presenting. Because just because, I mean, if you go through a lot of the courses that Jason creates, that just because you get a vulnerability saying that it's there, it doesn't mean that it's actually there, right? And so when you present this to these development teams and you're having these meetings and you're saying, hey, look, this vulnerability exists, and they're like, well, we, we don't think it is once we look through the box and it doesn't actually show that particular version or walkthrough or anything like that. So again, the biggest thing from that standpoint, you still have to know your stuff, right? You can't just be high level, I think, to a certain degree, at least if you want, if you want to be good at it. If you want to be good at it, you kind of have to know the particulars about the tools you're using, because again, you're doing a lot of automated management, scanning, etc. But again, I just want to throw my caveat there. If you like pain and you like <laughs> slowness, go for it. <laughs> go for it. But again, it's definitely a top level overview. It helps a lot. You got to think about maintenance, windows, systems being down, because you got to think about the business and certain time periods where they're, they're like, no, we'll just accept the risk. We'll just accept the risk because we need to get this. We don't want to bring our production systems down. So again, if you're looking for a headache, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So the only side, the only caveat I'll give you on that in the world of GRC is a lot of people feel the way Jamario does. And as you just heard, if I offered Jamario a GRC analyst role, he would probably tell me to go screw myself, right? He doesn't <laughs> want to do that, right? That's not his, not fun for him. Yeah. That being said, a lot of people feel that way, especially those of us who came from the IT world, because we've always seen the auditors and the GRC folks as, oh man, they're here to make my life hard. They're not, they're here to make our stuff secure, but a lot of us just don't like it because of that reason. And so what you will find is that a lot of GRC roles are out there. And as an entry-level person, you may have a better time getting into a GRC role than you would a true analyst role, like a cybersecurity analyst or a pen tester role, because everybody wants to be a pen tester. And so there's so much more competition for that. So one of the things that, you know, if you're looking at this GRC world, I would look at, you know, baseline is security plus, second level is going to be something like CISSP, or CISA or CAP or, or, or S plus or something like that. And then there's also these in, individual trainings on RMF and, and NIST and things like that that you could do NIST cybersecurity framework you'd be looking at. But the benefit of something like that is that not as much competition because not as many people want to do that job. That being said, if you are a person who hates spreadsheets and numbers and you know, if you think back to the old days of balancing your checkbook, if that kind of stuff drives you crazy, do not go into GRC because it is so much of looking through just documents and paperwork and policies and making sure everything aligns up. And so it, it can be a very boring job for some people. I know some people, especially introverts, who love that. And I will tell you, it pays well because not everybody wants to do it and there's less competition. So it can be a really good area of the cybersecurity world. To me, I'm like, I'd rather just go fix the problems, right? And so there is there's a little bit of a tension there between the developers and the, and the system owners and operators versus those who do the auditing and assessments. So you'll see that with your C as well. So not a bad area to look at, but just be aware that it may not be as fun as something like pen testing, for instance. 